Hello. Today I am going to teach you how to tear down the valve for a Freedom Series water softener. Tools that are going to be required for the day. You need your special Freedom and Patriot valve wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, and an Allen wrench. So to get started, what you're going to have is you're going to have a valve on the tank. Obviously this valve is not on a tank and you're going to want to depressurize the system. So shut your bypass and press and hold your regen button. In doing so, your system will go into regeneration. With your system in bypass, this will relieve the pressure. Once your system is in backwash, your pressure is relieved, go ahead and unplug your unit. You can unplug it at the board. Or at the wall, it doesn't matter. So unplug your cable here. Um, also, I'm going to unplug uh, my drive cable. This all is going to be required. Your meter cable as well, you're going to have to unplug. Remove the wires. And on the front of your valve, if you look at near the top, you've got two tabs where your index fingers are supposed to go. Take your thumbs pop up on the clips, your board and mounting bracket are now free. After that, what you're going to want to do, take your wrench, this is a little bit easier when it's on a tank, you're going to loosen up your piston. Once it's loose, you can take it out by hand, Inspect your piston. You've got your main piston, which is your regeneration piston. Then you've got your brine piston. This one controls when your uh, valve is open to draw and to refill your brine tank. If you have any problems with either of these, this piece is available as an assembly, or you can snap it apart, and each individual piece is available as well. Typically, I recommend replacing the assembly if there's a significant problem. You can't put it on backwards, it just won't clip in, so pretty straightforward as to fixing and replacing the piston. So that's the piston, and you've got your seal and spacer stack. What you want to do is you want to inspect your outer seals, inspect your white uh, Teflon type seals, and then also look on the inside of the the uh, uh, stack, you can kind of see there, you've got uh, white quad seals in there. It's important to inspect those, make sure that they are completely intact. Um, a lot of times on your inlet, uh, where your inlet port is, it gets pretty rough and the quad seals do tear. And at that point you do not replace the seals, you replace the whole complete stack. So now that we have that off, uh, we can then take off our cables, then we'll take off our back plate. So just string your cables through. Your back plate is held into place. There's two clips, one on each side. What you gotta do is you just gotta kinda, there actually would help to have a flathead screwdriver, but you can pretty much use anything. Um, all you gotta do is just pry it out, put a little tension on it, and then go to the opposite side while putting tension on it, kind of twisting. There we go. So that comes off. Again, a flathead screwdriver makes that a lot easier than that just was. What you're going to then do is you're going to pop your cover off on your alternator, which is built right into the valve. You're going to see you've got your motor cable here. You can remove your motor, squeeze in on the clamp here, and what you're going to have is you're going to twist it. It pulls out. Just be careful not to break the wires. Then take your Phillips head screwdriver, remove your Phillips head screws,
to have your screws removed, take off your cap, put that to the side, and you've got three gears. First three gears are all exactly the same. So you can't mix them up. You don't have to worry about the direction that you put them on. And you've got a uh, fourth gear here that's a little bit larger. Again, can't mix it up. Can't go on backwards. It slides on, initiates the, the large drive gear, white drive gear. Next, you pull the white drive gear off. This also is keyed, so you're not going to be able to put it on any other way other than the way that it's supposed to go on. Slides right on. So you're going to pull that off, remove that. Then you're going to take your Allen wrench and remove the six Allen bolts on the cover. All right, we've got our bolts removed. What you can go ahead and do is remove the cap. Cap comes off. As you're going to see, you got an O-ring here. You got a spring. You've also got this end piece to the spring, or goes on the shaft or on the end of the spring. Um, just be careful not to lose it. What you have is your alternator. Again, this is keyed. can only go on one way under the shaft. So you go ahead and remove that. What we're going to be inspecting are those three O-rings or seals in here. Kind of got an odd shape to them. If for any reason they are blown out or tore, replace them. Um, sometimes you can blow them out uh, during startup, get excessive air. Uh, things get piped in backwards, they can, they can uh, get out of place uh, with no damage. Go ahead and replace them, no problems. What you can also do is, well, once you got the back off, you can take the front off and then I'll show you we can actually remove that center shaft. So we'll go ahead and remove the front six bolts. If you find an O-ring out of place in the rear, uh, many guys will just put the system back together thinking that they got the, they found the problem. I would recommend pulling the front cover off as well. This is due to the fact that if you blew an O-ring out in the back, there's a good chance you blew one out in the front. So it's on the rear. Cap just kind of pops off. Got the same spring. Clips into the cover. As you've seen, it can come off, not a big deal. You've got the same plug piece for in the end. Goes in into the spring. Pretty straightforward. Place that. You've also got the same, same disc in the front. Again, it's also key. This is a good example. This valve actually uh, was one that was sent back due to the fact that they piped it in backwards and as you can see or if you hopefully can see all three o-rings are blown out of place so you're going to inspect your your seals these seals are lubricated by water do not lubricate them any white seal in the system whether it's the inside quad seals or it's your large seals for your alternator do not lubricate Go ahead and replace your O-rings if they are in good shape. Again, I call them O-rings, but they're actually just a more of a oblong seal. Also, you can pull the shaft out of the center. There's an O-ring, two O-rings on there that are you're able to lubricate and return back into position. Once you have your seals back in, your shaft back in, go ahead and return your your disc, the alternator disc back into place. Replace the cover. 
cover is directional. It says top. Make sure I have your spring in place. This spring is not under much tension, therefore very easy to hold in position as you get the screws started. Similar to putting on a tire, you're going to want to kind of get your bolt semi started all the way around. And as you torque them down, do not tighten one right after the next. You're going to want to kind of go across from each other as you tighten them. Again, you can get them all started. before you torque them, make sure they're in position. I got them all pretty much started, so I'm going to start snugging them down. Back to the rear. Make sure seals are in place. Put the disc back into place. Pop spring back together, the end piece. And again, just identify that you're in the proper direction. This one's a little bit easier to identify which way is up and down as to the motor is always going to be on the right hand side when you're looking at it. Push that in place. Alright, everything is tight. Everything is snug down here. Go ahead and replace your gears. First, your white, large white gear. You can only go on one way. Put the large black gear on. And again, the three gears. Doesn't matter which it doesn't matter orientation of the gears, that will find home on its own. Then you can go ahead and line this cover back up and replace the motor here. force anything. Everything should line right up.
right, you've got your three screws back in. Now we're going to replace the motor. Go ahead and squeeze your clip while holding the terminals on your motor. You're going to have to kind of turn the motor until you find it. It will drop into place. Once it drops into place, rotate it. You know, you'll find kind of an area, small area where you're able to turn it, and it's locked in. Um, it'll move a little bit, but it's, it won't move a lot. Then go ahead and run your cable back through the channel. Put your cover back on. It comes around underneath, up over a little retaining clip, and we're back to the front. Now to replace the front, if everything looked good, nothing was damaged, you're going to put your stack, you replace your stack back into the valve. Go ahead and take your piston, you're going to put your cover back on, or your back plate back on. Easier to put it on than take it off. Just go ahead and clips right into place. With your piston, threads back in. Then you're going to torque this down. Often people are a little hesitant, they're not sure how far to turn this in. You're going to tighten it down until it's tight. One way to confirm. One way to confirm that it is in position is if you pull your drain line, take your finger and feel into the rear, you'll see the, the spacer, one of the gray spacers inside there. Let's see if I can get you to get an angle that we can see it. Yes, really it's kind of dark, so I'll take this cutaway valve and show you what I'm talking about. What you're going to see is you're going to see this first spacer here. If you can look down through your drain port or feel down is my favorite way to do it because what you can see is sometimes deceiving. You feel down and what you're feeling for is you want to make sure that right here this o-ring is not visible and that this spacer is in line with the rear of this port. It should be smooth across. That way you know that the o-ring is in place. Once it's at that point, no reason, no reason at all to keep torquing it down. Sometimes you can get it tighter, but there's absolutely no reason, no benefit to doing that. So definitely don't recommend it. So we've got the valve completely back together. We're going to want to put our timer and electronic mounting bracket back on. Before you are able to lock it into place, we need to run our cables back through. So we're going to take our power cable and our meter cable and our drive cable and run it back through. We've got the feed channels. You're going to be able to see where they were locked in. Push them in, up out of the way. It should go over the top of your clips. Locks into place. You can run that right back down through the little chaseways on the side. Plug in your drive, plug in your meter cable, and last but not least, plug in your power cable. Upon plugging back in your power cable, your control is going to reset. Alright, controls reset. It identified where the piston was in the front. It also identified where your alternator was, so which tank is online, which one is offline. Now would be a good time to run your system through regeneration. Make sure all that your all your cycles are working properly.